Today on Rating Every Pokemon, we're talking about Gen 4, but forget that, I'm too busy worrying about how much of a pain in the ass the Gen 9 video is gonna be. In case you've been missing the trailers for Scarlet and Violet, details on the regional forms and battle gimmicks were revealed. And who boy, if that new Terrastal system is to be believed, there could be a lot of Pokemon for us to rate. Yeah, Cloud and I both figured that there would be a handful of new regional forms of old Pokemon, and indeed, there will be. But the Pokemon Company revealed that every single Pokemon in Gen 9 will have a terrestrial form, which, depending on how many Pokemon are in the regional decks, could mean well over three or four hundred ratings for both of us to cover, in addition to the new Pokemon and regional forms. Um, hello everyone, it's me, Cloud Connection. Uh, you were just listening to me talk a little while ago. We recorded this script in late August, early September, when it wasn't really clear what the terrestrial system would be, um, and now that we know that it's going to be type-based rather than Pokemon-based, um, we realize it's kind of not that big of a deal for our rating system. You know, we were kind of worried that every single Pokemon would have its own unique terrestrial form to rate, but that doesn't seem to be the case, so um, ignore our worrying about what it's going to be. That's old information. Anyway, uh, let's just move on. Let's talk about Gen 4. This is where I personally dropped off of Pokemon, while Dribson continued onward, and it's wild to me that that was 16 years ago now. I've forgotten a lot about Diamond and Pearl since then, so I'm personally very excited to look at the Pokemon from this generation. That's what we're both here to do, of course, so let's once again run down the rules. We're rating all 107 Pokemon from Gen 4 on a scale from 1 to 10 based on their designs, usefulness in battles, etc. Region-specific forms count for the generation they're introduced, not for the Pokémon's original generation. And no separate rating for form differences unless they're a fusion. Let's get to the ratings. I think Turtwig is kinda cute, but it's mostly pretty boring for me. Not bad, but not really that great. Turtwig is my favorite first form starter from Sinnoh. It's just so cute, and a grass turtle is a nice idea for a Pokemon. Some minor improvements over Turtwig as far as body shape, but a lot of features like the bushes and plated feet really bug me. I think Grottle is still pretty cool, at least for a middle starter evolution. It's distinct enough to not just be a slightly bigger first form. You know what? I never liked Torterra in the past, I thought it was a stupid Pokemon with a stupid concept, but looking at it now, I actually really like it. Now I think the idea is really great, and most of the stuff I didn't like about its previous forms are gone. Well done, Torterra. I really love Torterra. I don't know if it's everything growing out of its back, or just the overall toughness of it, but this design is great. Cute and a little sassy, but Chimchar isn't really extraordinary for me. It's a very respectable starter, but not my favorite from Sinnoh. Tiny monkey. Not that much better than Chimchar in all honesty, but Monferno at least avoids the middle starter weirdness trope. Punchy monkey. The fire starter line for this generation is very solid, and Infernape ends it out on a great note. The white tufts of fur really complement the rest of the colors, especially the flames. Burning monk. You know what? No. No more monkey jokes. Want to stop that before getting to Gen 5. Anyway, Infernape has always been my least favorite final starter from Sinnoh. The fact that I'm still giving this a 9 should speak volumes about the quality of Sinnoh's final starter evolutions. Look at it! It is Piplup! Piplup is adorable! Piplup was actually my first starter choice when I first got Diamond. I specifically remember coming home from GameStop or wherever, playing Diamond on my DS and picking Piplup. I kinda like that Prinplup almost has a suit on, and the discs on its head are kinda neat, but it is a bit of a downgrade from Piplup. Finally, a design that I'm not a huge fan of. I still like it, and it rounds out the middle starter evolutions nicely. Empoleon is a badass, awesome Pokémon, even though it's just really following the trend of taking an adorable initial stage and making its final version cool, for my money, Empoleon is one of the best to do it. 
I don't know if it's the black, blue, and yellow scheme, the trident head ornament, the steel typing, or the overall penguin aesthetic, but Empoleon rules. I think Sinnoh is the only generation with no wrong favorite starter choice, especially final evolutions. By this point, the whole Route 1 bird trope probably felt very stale to some, but I think Starly sticks out thanks to the gray and white color contrast and the simple pattern on its plumage. It's really just a bird, but the fact that I know almost everyone that plays through these games picks one of these up makes me give it a pretty good score. This is just Starly with a stupid anime haircut. Staravia kinda loses me a bit here, since it's not a cute little orb like Starly, and nowhere near as cool as Staraptor. Staraptor has the edge that you might expect from a middle evolution, but I think it balances out to a pretty cool, if not spectacular, design. Probably the best of the best of Route 1 bird Pokemon. Amazing raptor design, striking red feather tuft, and just edgy enough for my liking. I don't quite buy into the Bidoof hype, and I honestly think the Pokemon Company has banged too hard on Bidoof as a meme, but I can still recognize this as a decent little critter. While I don't think Bidoof is as epic slash awesome slash legendary slash meme worthy as most would, I really don't dislike it. It's round and cute enough, and being a good user of HM moves is a bonus. Bibarel honestly deserves more praise than its pre-evolution for keeping the same dopey qualities in the face while maturing it up rather well. I don't think this is a great design, but I absolutely still cannot understate the sheer utility that Bibarel provides in the form of HM moves. There's a reason that this is the pop-in animation for field moves in BDSP. As I've said before, a lot of first stage bug Pokemon really appeal to me, and while Krikatot isn't the best in that regard, I still think it has a ton of charm. It took a while for a design that I actually don't really care for at all, but it's not all that bad. The musical conductor design is pretty nice. Okay, Krikatoon's Cry is a certified banger, but the Pokemon itself, a little too goofy for me. Yeah, yeah, did a whoop. That's really all this Pokemon has going for it, it's Cry. And I guess it's Mustache? I'm slowly realizing that light blue and black is an awesome color combination, and Shinx is no exception. It's adorable, and the design of its fur really appeals to me. Okay, I know you've all added one of these to your teams in Sinnoh as well. Not that I blame you, I almost always do as well. It's a little too similar to Shinx for me, barring Luxio's tufts of black fur, which don't look so great in my opinion. Eh, Luxio isn't really that great. It feels like the weird teenage emo phase of Shinx. Some of the improvements over Luxio, like the mane and the increased leg stripes, are very cool, and yet the black fur kinda overtakes this one for me. Not enough to give it a lower score, but still enough to complain. Luxray wraps around to being awesome again. Sinnoh really offers some awesome Pokemon as Evolution's early game, doesn't it? It's not too often where early game Pokemon are cool enough to be consistently mainstays in teams. A little too plain, just being another small spheroid, but the intertwined appendages up top are a plus. Say it with me everyone, Dripson doesn't like baby Pokemon. Though I don't really hate Badoo. It looks significantly different enough from Roselia that I can give it a pass. Just a bit. Roserade's flowers are fidget spinners. Why did they try to make Roserade sexy? Like, I kinda get it that you would attempt it with the bouquet Pokemon with a masquerade theme, but still, don't fuck the plant. Cranidos is fine, I suppose, but not really that interesting, and while blue and black is a great color combo, blue and gray just doesn't look right to me. Raise your hand if you died to this thing in Rourke's gym because you picked Chimchar and couldn't count with the base 125 attack at level 14. This just looks like Cranidos with a hunchback. No thank you. I learned this the other day. This is the Headbutt Pokemon. Not the headbutt Pokemon like the move, but the head butt Pokemon. Two different words. And I guess Cranidos too, but I had stuff to say about him. I'm sure somebody finds this cute. Not me. 
I spent a good two hours in Legends Arceus waiting for space-time distortions to occur, looking for just two of these, one of which to evolve into Bastiodon. These were the last two Pokémon I needed to catch to have caught all non-legendary Pokémon in that game. I can't quite nail down what Bastiodon is supposed to be. Is it a Rhino? A Triceratops? A Bulldozer? A Plow? I just don't get this one. It took a while, but we finally hit a Pokémon that I can call Ugly. Also, raise your hand if you were killed by Metal Burst in Byron's Gym because your Earthquake slash Close Combat slash Surf from your starter wasn't strong enough to kill this in one hit. I love the idea of Burmy, but I think the execution leaves a bit to be desired. My favorite form is Sandy Cloak because it looks like an unfried chicken nugget. It's... fine, I guess. I like the idea of it changing form based on where it last battled by using material nearby to cloak itself. I like the trash cloak the most, since it looks like it's in a cozy sleeping bag. I've got similar feelings on Wormadam, but I think the body shape looks a little nicer. For Wormadam, I actually like trash cloak the most because it's pretty. It's just a bigger Burmy. Not much else to say here, and I still prefer trash cloak, since it's the least busy of all the designs. While I can appreciate that Mothim tries to differentiate itself from its two related forms, it doesn't do that much better in my eyes. This is one of the least interesting Pokémon, I think. It goes against what Burmy and Wormadam set up with the multiple forms based on previous battle location. Three happy little dudes just chilling about. Combi is such an adorable Pokémon. Also, Sir B. Rus. Combi's pretty cute. I also have two shinies of this in Legends Arceus, both of which are male. Maybe someday I'll get around to finding a shiny female. I liked the honeycomb body shape of Combi, but Vespiquen, and I don't like that it's not called Vespiquen by the way, doesn't pull it off as well with the bottom pattern. But otherwise, it's not bad. Vespiquen is a design I've always really liked, but never got around to using in any playthroughs until my recent playthrough of Diamond. It's also the start of the trend towards stronger bug types. You might find Pachirisu a little generic. I mean, how many rodents have we had so far? But I think the colors and spikes make it stand out at least a little bit. The obligatory Pikachu clone. But anyone who's at all familiar with competitive Pokemon knows the power of Pachirisu. What a great idea for a Pokémon. Buizel is a very good creature that is a perfect example of a non-traditional water type. They don't all have to be sea creatures, and having an otter-like animal with swimming features is pretty awesome. If you didn't pick Piplup as your starter, you probably picked this in your team as the water type Pokémon. Good choice. I kinda wish there was a little more to Float Soul compared to its pre-evolution, as it doesn't look too different. Still very solid, but not as unique. I really like this design, but the black spots under the edge of its lips are strange. Is it like face paint? Like what Buizel has under its eyes? Okay, now I'm starting to get a wee sick of the cute sphere, even if this one has an orbital familiar friend. It's alright, I guess. Pretty harmless design, but ultimately forgettable. Interesting choice to turn a cherry into an eggplant. I prefer the overcast form myself because... eggplant. This is a bit better, but not by much. Maybe because I'm really only familiar with the overcast form, but sunshine form is my favorite. It probably wouldn't feel nice, but I want to pet Shellos. They are friend. I'm partial to the West Sea variant myself. I like the pink colors on it a little more. Shellos is damn cute for a slug. I prefer the West Sea form, since I think the pink and white looks nicer than the blue and green, and I'm not a fan of East Sea's protrusions. Gastrodon is pretty okay. Don't have much more to say about it, but I will say that its West Sea form is still superior. I still prefer the West Sea form, but they're much closer this time. I think swapping the colors around make them look much better. Ambipom might be better if the appendages for the hand tails weren't so long. Were they retracted a bit, I might give it a higher score. This is just more Apom, but its tails look more like balloons than hands. This Pokemon is fucked up, and I'm sorry, but I can't get over that. 
I know this thing canonically kidnaps children, but it's just so cute. That doesn't give it a pass though. I do really like the design of Driftblim, actually, but seriously, why did they go so dark with these two? A bit of a downgrade from Driftloon, but still a pretty good design overall. <laughs> Baneri is pretty cute, and I do like the cotton-esque tufts of fur, but it's not a spectacular design. What a nice and innocent looking Pokemon. I'm sure nothing bad will happen at all to this cute little rabbit. I tried very hard to ignore the rampant fan base Lopunny has and judge it objectively, and the best I could do was determine that it was mediocre. But that's me. Objectively, this isn't a bad design. It's just a shame this is also, like, the only good looking rabbit Pokemon until Gen 8. <laughs> I personally don't think Miss Dreva's needed an evolution, but if they had to make one, Miss Magius is a pretty good one. I really like the witch aesthetic going on here, and this feels like a proper evolution to Mistrevis. <sighs> Honchkrow gets points for being funny, but that's about it. I wasn't huge on this Pokemon until my recent replay of Diamond, where I used one of these instead of my go-to Staraptor, but I like it a bit more now. I did always like the Mafia design to it though. Hmm, not a big fan of this one. Something about Glammeow's face and tail just bothers the hell out of me. The springy tail is a nice feature to distinguish this Pokemon from the other cat-inspired designs in generations past. It lives up to its name! I really hate fat pets. Like a lot. This isn't a chonk, this is animal cruelty. The only thing I can give this abomination credit for is its blistering 112 base speed, which puts it above the likes of other notoriously speedy Pokemon like Raichu, Gengar, and the Lottie Twins. While it's nowhere near as great as Chimeco, I can at least appreciate that a bell Pokemon like this evolves into a wind chime. Even attaching a baby form to one of my favorite Pokemon doesn't mean I'll like it, though I don't completely hate this design. While Stunky is mostly just a skunk, I give it a pass because skunks are cute. Minus a point for the puffed out cheeks though. Yep, it's a skunk. Not much more to say here. Not much different than Stunky, and overall it just looks a little worse. It's still a skunk, but the tail going over the head is a decent little detail. I like how the Platinum and Heart Gold Soul Silver sprites for this Pokemon make it look like it farts when using certain moves like Flamethrower. Bronzor is an odd Pokemon, but I think it's actually a little bit cute. Just a little, mind you. It's just a mirror, but I think this is a pretty good design. It's unique for sure, but not terribly interesting. The bell part of Bronzong does look really cool, but I'm not a fan of the handle design, so it kinda averages out. A much better design, and transitioning from a mirror into a bell is pretty unique too. Bonsai is really only getting this high of a rating because I think bonsai trees are really cool, because otherwise, it's not really any better than decent. I don't really dislike this one either, but I still dislike baby Pokemon. Now look, I don't condone violence against Pokemon. Which I know is kind of weird to say considering the entire raison d'etre behind Pokemon is making them commit violence against each other, but you know what I mean. That being said, destroy this little shitbag until it no longer exists in this universe. I may be a bit of a Mr. Mime apologist, but I cannot defend this bastard child of his. Not as egregiously awful as Mime Jr., but Happiny is still far too saccharine, the kind of disgustingly cute that makes it completely unappealing. Does one of these live inside every Chansey and Blissey to exist? Is that inside of every one of Chansey's eggs? Could I steal a Chansey's eggs, hatch it, and find this inside? Beautiful colors, a fun design, uniquely tying the concept into the animal that inspires it, what's not to love with Chadot? Remember when Game Freak banned this Pokemon from official play because you could scream slurs into your DS and this Pokemon would repeat them? Good times, minus the whole slurs bit. 
It's kind of interesting to see a ghost Pokemon that actually looks 100% ethereal, like a soul separated from the body, but Spiritomb does nothing for me visually. I really like this Pokemon, and replaying through Diamond was the first time I ever got one myself through the underground, though I did just use a second DS of my own with Platinum. Also, shout out to the like, six people that caught a shiny Alpha Spiritomb in Legends Arceus before the Daybreak update. Gibble is a pudgy little dude, and that makes up for an otherwise clashing design between cool and cute. Why he's so round? He too small for his arms and legs. I don't know what's up with the knee pad teeth, but Gabite does look pretty decent. Actually quite the significant upgrade from Gibble, and I'd be perfectly happy using one of these on my team, if it wasn't for... Most of Garchomp is awesome, but man, I do not like those fins on its arms. I think they look very dumb and detract from a design that might otherwise be a 10. What's there to say about the first non-legendary Pokemon that was banned to the Ubers tier in Smogon singles because it was too strong? And Sandvale, but don't worry about that part. And if you ignore Wobbuffet and Why Not's Shadow Tag ban. I can appreciate how they tried to make a little Snorlax really cute while retaining the features of its iconic evolution, and for the most part, I think it works. Again, not a horrible baby Pokemon design, and its encounter method in Sinnoh is quite unique, but entirely unfun to hunt for. But of course, Barry can find one in probably his first honey tree. A fairly solid Pokemon that is unfortunately, but understandably, overshadowed by its evolution. Riolu certainly isn't bad, but it isn't anything special. I know I've almost exclusively bashed on baby Pokemon in this series, but Riolu is actually a pretty good design. This almost feels like it could be a water type starter if given the type change. While it maybe is a little overpraised, I can't deny that Lucario is pretty badass. I definitely understand why it's so popular. I know that this Pokemon was clearly designed to be a mascot of sorts, but damn did it work. It's hard to understate this Pokemon's popularity, as unpopular Pokemon don't make their way into Smash Brothers on accident. Okay, so I like Hippopotas, and I cannot tell you why, so I'm not even gonna bother. I've always thought that Hippopotas was pretty cute, and unique for Hippopotamus Pokemon, being entirely ground and sand-based instead of water-themed. I hate that Hippowdon looks like it's drowning in quicksand in the official artwork because it makes me really sad. That being said, it does look pretty cool. This design always stuck out to me as being really cool, though I didn't fully appreciate this until using it in both Legends Arceus and Diamond recently. Can't say I've ever been a fan of Scoruppy, and the colors especially don't work for me. Scoruppy's actually pretty cute. We need more unique bug designs in Pokemon and not just caterpillars, butterflies, and spiders. Drapion is better, at least, thanks to the more purple-heavy shades looking a bit nicer, but still, I'm pretty indifferent. Drapion is awesome, and pretty much perfectly expands on what Scorpy laid down. Easily the coolest bug type since Sight. Wait, this isn't even a bug type anymore. I like Krogunk quite a bit, while its expression is a little bizarre, I really appreciate the contrasting colors. Krogunk is kinda cool, but a bit odd looking. I think it's the buck teeth and the oddly orange middle finger on its three fingered hands. <laughs> Most of Toxicroak is a definite improvement, but its face just looks so damn stupid, so much that I can't give it a higher score. Toxicroak's a bit better, but still has the weird teeth thing going on. Again, love me some carnivorous plants, and Carnivine checks off all the marks, mostly cool and intimidating, and yet in a strange way, I find it just a little bit cute? Don't judge me. This Pokemon's so forgotten, it's a bit sad really. Venus flytraps aren't as cool as pitcher plants though, so Victory Bell wins in the carnivorous plant-based grass-type Pokemon competition. Finneon is absolutely precious, and I will not tolerate any Finneon slander in this video. Wow, I can't believe they made a water-type fish-based evolution. While Lumineon's pectoral fins are a little too showy for me, I still think this is a great design overall. 
I actually really like Lumineon's design, but it's such a forgettable Pokemon. Maybe if this got the fairy type in Gen 6, more people would appreciate this one. Mantike is just small Mantine, and Mantine is awesome. Ergo, Mantike is just as awesome, and without the tag along Remoraid to boot. This is such a strange one for me. It's a baby Pokemon, but I actually think this one is pretty cute. Maybe it's the eyes looking like one of the weird Mii Maker options. Snover looks a little weird, but I actually really like the idea of a snowed on tree Pokemon and the colors look nice together. This isn't a Pokemon. This is real. I've seen these outside of my house in the winter. I think Obama Snow leaned a little too far away from Snover for my liking. It's certainly not a bad Pokemon, but the design isn't as solid as its previous form. I've actually been quite fond of Obama Snow over the years, but it's kind of fell off for me a bit. Maybe it's because of years of referring to this Pokemon as Obama Snow or Snowbama within various friend groups growing up, but I can't take this name as seriously anymore. Here's a Pokemon I only know because of Smash Brothers. Every time I think of this Pokemon, I can only imagine him false swiping on Pokemon Stadium 2. Just edgy enough, and distinct enough from Sneasel. Well, I definitely appreciate that unlike Magneton, Magnezone looks pretty different from Magnemite while retaining some of its features. You know, like an evolution should do. Magneton, what happened to you? You good, bro? I don't get it. Why does Licky Licky got that Wi-Fi belly? Contrary to its name, Rhyperior is not, in fact, superior to Rhyhorn, but I find it more interesting than Rhydon, at least. I mean, Rhyperior's got palm cannons? Cool, I guess. This feels like too much of an upgrade from Rhydon, in my opinion. You know, I gave Tangela a low rating in the Gen 1 video, but I almost feel bad about doing that compared to the abomination that is Tangrowth. This thing is actively disgusting. It's just bigger Tangela with noodle arms. <laughs> Actually, Electivire is kinda great when I examine it up close. I wouldn't have guessed that. A good improvement over Electabuzz to be sure, but I don't dig the whole two tails thing. Also, this should have been an electric fighting type. I do like the idea of Magmortar, but man, the face is still an issue for me. That's also primarily why I rated Magmar so low back in the Gen 1 video. I didn't really explain myself there, so there you go. Honestly, a vastly better design over Magmar, but the duck face holds it back just enough in my opinion. Very cute, very beautiful, a worthy evolution for Togepi. It's just rounder Togetic, but I guess it's probably the best direction to have taken the line. Marginally better than its previous evolution, and the darker colors are a nice touch. Yanmega's really cool, dragonflies are still cool, and I honestly kinda dig the militaristic design going on here. Leafeon is far from my favorite evolution, but it's still a very solid and somewhat majestic little creature. I'm not a huge fan of the chips in the leaves of Leafeon's design, as they make it look imperfect, which it otherwise is. This is an evolution I always forget about, and that's on me because Glaceon is very, very pretty and looks like it has a lot of sass, which I am all in favor of. Glaceon is so pretty. That's it. Pretty dog. It definitely looks better than Gligar, not to mention spookier, but it's still not that great. Gliscor is pretty awesome too. Why are all the cool slash tough looking evolutions from the Platinum expansion to the decks such bangers? What do you know, Mamoswine actually really improved on its predecessors. If it had more of a standout feature, I think it could have been even better. Yep, that's a mammoth. Not the direction I'd ever think that Paloswine would go, but a drastic improvement nonetheless. This would have never happened to Porygon 2 if it had just installed NordVPN. Staying safe online is an ever-growing difficulty, and you could- This is such a quirky hacking. Pokemon, and maybe the most interesting in the whole line. Um, no thanks. 
while I don't think that this is as nice of a design as Gardevoir, this is still a perfectly good counterpart to her. <laughs> Probopass's huge nose is a big advantage, as it provides the perfect target for when you're trying to kick this awful fucking thing into the stratosphere. Ugh, nope. We were doing so well for this part of the decks. While I find it weaker than Dusk Skull and Dusk Clops overall, I still think Dusk Noir is a pretty good design for a ghost Pokemon. An odd choice of evolution for Dusk Clops, but it's still partially in the theme of it, I guess. Interesting idea to have a female exclusive evolution for Snorunt of all Pokemon, and I like how it incorporates a few elements from Glalie as well. That being said, it's not a spectacular design. Okay, raise your hand if you died to this thing's snow cloak in Candace's gym at least once in your life. Also, how does this evolve from Snowrunt as well? I like the idea of Rotom far more than I like the actual design. It's just kind of bland to me even if it has an interesting concept. My favorite form is Mo Rotom because it looks the funniest. I've really enjoyed Rotom as a Pokemon. My only question is why this had the legendary battle theme in Gen 4. Also, I dislike the Rotom phone idea from Gen 7 onwards. Also, also, my favorite Rotom appliance is Frost Rotom, though Mo Rotom's Cheshire Cat-esque smile comes in close second for me. It's boring. It's sleep, and that's really about it for me. It's also boring. It's just pink Yuxi with different hair, and that's really about it for me. It's slightly less boring. It's just blue Mesprit with different hair, and that's really about it for me. Dialga is a personal favorite legendary of mine. The plating looks awesome, the colors are great, and while it looks incredible, it doesn't feel too extravagant. I don't think I've mentioned this before, but when a new Pokemon game comes out, I always pick which game based on the mascot legendary, and Diamond was the first game I got to do that with. So Dialga holds a little spot in my heart for that. While I do like Palkia, I do think the color scheme isn't nearly as good as Dialga's, and that means a lot to me with Pokemon. I was never really keen on this design up until playing Legends Arceus and seeing it to scale in 3D properly. What? Actually, one of my favorite legendaries from this generation, though I couldn't really tell you why, other than I like the design. Half of Regigigas looks fine, the other half does not look fine at all. So I guess it's split all down the middle for me. Probably my actual least favorite of the Regi trio, sorry, Quartet at this point. It feels artificially created, unlike the three before it. The altered form, which is what I'm basing this rating on, looks really damn cool, but I can't say I care for the origin form. Having legs makes all the difference. I know that I said that Rayquaza is my favorite legendary of all time, and Giratina has always been a close second as well. Though what is origin form Giratina but an edgier Rayquaza? That's also my preferred form. I don't much care for Cresselia, but it isn't that bad of a Pokemon, honestly. Quite a nice design for a legendary Pokemon, and falls more into that mythical guardian deity with the likes of the Mew clones. There really didn't need to be both Fione and Manaphy in the decks, and spoiler alert, I think Manaphy's got the better design by far, so that will get a proper rating. For Fione, I'm just giving it a 5 because although it's redundant, it's not bad at all. Do you consider this Pokemon a legendary? Let us know in the comments. I won't read them, and engagement is good for the algorithm. Anyways, I say yes, so we'll include this in any awards regarding legendaries. Even if it isn't a very intricate design, Manatee's simplicity works heavily in its favor, and it has the edge over Fione because of those yellow markings. The Manaphy movie was one of the few Pokemon movies I remember watching as a kid, so I've always liked this Pokemon. But I guess this is the requisite Mew clone, sounds the psychic typing. I think Darkrai is a little too simple for a legendary Pokemon, but without considering that status, it is a very great creature. I also remember watching the Darkrai movie as a kid, and this is a nice counterpart to Cresselia. 
What an adorable little dude. I really love Shaman. It's another Pokemon that's deserving of a high rating. Both the forms are great, but the Sky form has that confident smirk that really sells it for me. Not bad, but not that great. For both forms, though I guess I prefer the Sky form. Rounding out a great string of legendaries, Arceus and Sinnoh on a very high note. For what is basically the Pokemon equivalent of God, it's surprisingly understated while still being elegant. As for my favorite form, uh, Ice, I guess. It's a literal Pokemon God, or if Legends Arceus is to be believed, a fraction of a literal God sent to the Pokemon world to observe and follow a 12-year-old kid around for fun, or whatever gods do in their multi-timeline lifetimes. I don't know if I really have a favorite form since they're all pretty much the same, but I guess I like Arceus Fairy the best since I think the fairy type pink fits the best with Arceus's white body. And that's all the Gen 4 Pokemon rated. You know what time it is, let's bring it over to the Dripsin to analyze that data. Thanks Cloud. First of all, we're keeping a running total of our average scores for each generation. Cloud's average score was 6.25, his lowest so far but only by a .05 margin behind Gen 1 but my average score was 6.67, which is my highest score to date. Of all 107 Pokemon from this generation, we gave 15 of them the same score, spread pretty evenly between Pokemon we liked and thought were okay, as well as one we despised. Next, let's look at our total score counts for Gen 4, and this time, there aren't any super notable trends to speak of. Cloud's scores hovered between 5 and 7, accounting for over half of his ratings, while I tended to hand out scores of 6 through 9, though there were definitely plenty of exceptions for both of those trends. And as always, here's a quick recap of our ratings for Gen 4. And now it's time to hand out the awards for the least awful and most not best Pokemon from Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. First are the awards for the best and worst starter lines based on their combined average scores, and while Gen 4 has overall had the best run for starter Pokemon, we have to single out the best and worst. The perfect partner award goes to the Empoleon line, and interestingly enough, it contained our least favorite of the Gen 4 starter Pokemon, that being Prinplup, but Piplup and Empoleon carried it to first place. And the Atrocious Ally Award goes to the Torterra line, but I should point out that we still like this line just fine. Next are the awards for the best and worst legendary Pokemon, based on our combined scores. Gen 4's mythical masterpiece is Giratina, beating out plenty of strong contenders like Dialga and Darkrai. And the fantastical flop this time is Regigigas, the second Regimon to get this award, though it's not because of an obscene gesture this time, it's because we both found it to be pretty mediocre. Then we've got the best and worst type awards, calculated by averaging the score of every Pokemon in the type group. As a clarification, Pokemon that have different types for location or stat-based forms count for any types that they can be, but item-based form changes don't count. For example, Wormadam counts for Bug, Grass, Ground, and Steel, and Rotom counts for Electric, Ghost, Fire, Water, Ice, Flying, and Grass, but Arceus only counts for the normal type. So, the Excellent Element Award goes to Dragon, the second time it's won this award, as it also clinched the top spot for Gen 1. And the Catastrophic Category Award goes to the Fairy type, though if that type wasn't retroactively applied to Pokémon, then Rock would win this award for the second time. Moving on to the awards for the Best and Worst Glow Up, which we found by calculating the highest rise and drop in scores from one evolution to another. As a reminder, we are counting new evolutions of previously existing Pokémon, but we aren't retroactively counting anything that comes before a previously existing Pokémon. So while we aren't determining if Roselia is a good or bad glow-up for Badoo, we are determining if Roserade is a good or bad glow-up for Roselia. 
Anyway, the Terrific Transformation Award goes to Mamoswine, who improved over Gen 2's Piloswine with a massive 10-point improvement, which isn't even the biggest score increase we've seen so far for this award. And the Metamorphic Mistake Award goes to Perugly, who, true to its name, lost a lot of our favor. Seven points worth, to be precise. Now there's the award for the Pokémon that Dripson and I disagreed on the most, and our contentious critter this time was Drifloon, with a difference of eight between me and my brother. I'm sorry if you really like Drifloon's design, but I just couldn't get over the whole this thing kidnaps children angle. Finally, let's go over the awards for the best and worst antagonists, aka the best rival, gym leader, elite four trainer, champion, or villain team leader based on the team's average combined score. To quickly remind you of the rules, duplicate Pokemon aren't counted twice, we're judging on final encounters only where applicable, we're basing these ratings on Pokemon Platinum, trainers must have at least one new Pokemon, Super bosses only count if they're fought in the post game and don't have any future gen Pokemon, and no battle facility exclusive trainers. Gen 4's Big Bad Boss Award goes to Cyrus, the second villain team leader to take this award thanks to some amazing Pokemon from previous generations boosting his team. And the Bad Bad Boss Award goes to Team Galactic Commander Mars, brought down significantly by our Golbat and Perugly. And before we wrap it up, let's quickly run through the special honors. The Hall of Fame hosts Pokemon that received a perfect score of 10 from both of us, but neither of us could agree on a perfect Pokemon this time, so no new inductees. The Hall of Shame is for those who receive an anti-perfect score of 1 from us both, and Mime Jr. joins Smoochum as the second entrant for this not-coveted award. And the Hall of Tame features Pokemon who received a score of 5 from the two of us, and Cherubi and Fion get a spot here this time. So that's it for Gen 4, and for me, it was very interesting to look back at this generation. Even though I played this gen around its launch, I have absolutely no nostalgic connection to Diamond and Pearl and their Pokemon. That might be why I was a little more critical this generation, I'll admit, but I also appreciate that the designers experimented more this time around. A lot of that experimentation doesn't work for me personally, but when you're expanding an already packed roster of 386 to 493, you inevitably have to take risks, and that's a principle I can get behind even if the results aren't stellar. Gen 4 was not a generation I had high praise for for the longest time, actually. I thought they were inferior to both Gen 3 and Gen 5, both when I first played all of them and looking back after a few years. However, after the reveal of BDSP, and how good those games weren't, as well as the release of Legends Arceus, I got oddly nostalgic for these games, and actually replayed through Diamond before this video, and thoroughly enjoyed my time. While I am still not a huge fan of the Gen 4 games, I do have a better appreciation of them than I may have had a year or two ago. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you liked it, then give it a like, leave a comment, and make sure to subscribe and click that bell to see when new videos go live. As a reminder, rather than heading to Gen 5 next, we're skipping over to rating all the Gen 9 creatures once Scarlet and Violet launch, so look forward to that. Until next time, this is Cloud Connection and Dribson signing off. Catch you later!